Hello Year 7 and welcome to this webinar about punctuation basics. We have three key learning aims. First of all, we're looking at using end punctuation. Secondly, we're looking at punctuation marks in the middle of a sentence. And finally, we're looking at using speech marks. But perhaps the most important question is why do we need punctuation? Well, punctuation makes things clearer, it makes you more understandable. I often say that if you try and write without using punctuation, it's as if you're trying to talk with your hand in front of your mouth. It's not that easy to understand. And punctuation is also for emphasis. Often you, you will use a highlighter, you will underline something, and punctuation helps us to highlight or understand and underline the things that are really important. And it also stops confusion. So look at these sentences. Let's eat grandma versus let's eat grandma. The comma will save a life. And I love cooking, my dogs and my family. Um, I love cooking, comma, my dogs and my family. I love drawing, comma, my dogs and my family. So again, punctuation saves lives. Now here is the full range of punctuation marks. You have wonderful punctuation marks like the square brackets and the round brackets, also known as parentheses. You've got the slash, you've got the dash, you've got the asterisk, ellipsis, dot, dot, dot. I love punctuation, but we're going to look at end punctuation and commas first. First of all, we'll look at full stops. These are often underused and very important. When do we use full stops? Well, we use them at the end of a normal statement sentence. My dog loves the postman, a declarative sentence. We use them at the end of an order. Please leave the room, an imperative sentence. And we also need them for abbreviations. So sometimes things like BBC or other abbreviations, EG, IE, etc we need a full stop to show that words have been shortened or abbreviation abbreviated. Now, full stop is responsible for the most common punctuation mistake, the run on sentence. Now, I don't know what your teachers are like year seven, but the run on sentence is often the bane of a teacher's mark. It really is about not using the punctuate, the full stop um, well and punctuating a sentence with a comma. That's like trying to stick a poster up with toothpaste rather than blue tack. Commas just don't stick sentences. They don't show the end of one sentence and the beginning of another, which we call sentence demarcation. So commas are used and sometimes people don't use any punctuation at all. So the run on sentence can be a whole paragraph. You haven't put that blue tack in or the tack, um, the pin in. And so the sentence runs on and on and on. It sounds like you're out of breath. Now, this is a typical paragraph, a run on paragraph with all these run on sentences. They don't even have an inaccurate use of a comma. They've just got no punctuation whatsoever. And I wonder if you can put the full stops and the capital letters in to show. Now, it reads like this. There's been a lot in the news recently about the dangers of mobile phones. They say using them too much can melt your brains. It can be pretty annoying having to listen to someone going on and on about nothing in particular to a mate when you're on the bus. They go off all the time in the pictures and places like that. On the other hand, it'd be handy to have one in the car, don't you think? So it's an informal piece. So why don't you pause this webinar and see if you can put the full stops and the capital letters sentence demarcation in for this paragraph. Well, I hope that your paragraph now looks something like that. There's been a lot of, of in the news recently about the danger of mobile phones, full stop, capital letter, sentence demarcation. They say using too much can melt your brains, full stop, capital letter. It can be pretty annoying having to listen to someone going on and on about nothing in particular to a mate when you're on the bus, full stop, capital letter. They go off all the time in the pictures and places like that, full stop, capital letter. On the other hand, be handy to have one in the car though, full stop, capital letter. What do you think, question mark? Now, let's talk about exclamation marks. Exclamation marks, they show, they indi indicate a sudden command. Come here! Or intensity, volume. No! Or emotion. Yes! 
and they show strong emotions like surprise, anger, and joy. Exclamation marks can also be called exclamatory sentences. So we've got four different types of sentences, really. We've got full stops, the declarative, the imperative sentence, and then we've got the exclamatory sentence with the exclamation mark. Now, here are five short sentences. Some of them have two exclamation marks to show surprise, joy, sadness, fear, anger, disgust. So I want you to pause the webinar and see if you can add the exclamation marks to these sentences. OK, hopefully these were your answers. Hooray, it's my birthday. Yuck, I hate avocados. Congratulations, that was an impressive debate. Oh my goodness, we've lost. Wow, what a success. So you can see the strong emotions of joy and disgust and celebration and sorrow being expressed with exclamation marks. Now let's talk about question marks. Where there is a question and the question ends is where you have to place a question mark. Is he here? The end of the question, we put a question mark. Now, some questions are real questions, like, is he here? Other questions are, they're statements, but they're structured like questions. He's here. Some of them are tag questions. He's here, isn't he? And then rhetorical questions. They are just making a statement rather than asking a question. Who knew? It's just a statement of surprise rather than actually saying, well, I knew. So here is another example of four types of questions. You've got your normal question. Are you running late? And then you've got your statement as a question. You're running late. So it's a statement, but it still has a question mark. Are you run You're running late, aren't you, is a tag question. And then what time do you call this is a rhetorical question. They're not expecting a response. It's more like saying you're running late. I want you to pause the webinar and see you, if you can have a look at this, um, this uh, dish. And can you use a real question, a statement as a question, a tag question, a rhetorical question? Don't forget to add question marks. Pause the webinar and have a go. OK, so I hope you wrote something like, is this turkey or chicken? And then the question is, this is turkey. And the tag question, this is turkey, isn't it? And the rhetorical question, do you expect me to eat that? So you've got different types of questions and the question marks show the end of the question. Now we're thinking about commas because they, although they're not end punctuation, they really help within uh, the sentence. The first one for commas is to separate words, a series of words. So we're talking about someone who was tall, dark and handsome and the commas help to separate them out. They also help to separate phrases. I like reading books. I like listening to music. I like watching TV. They're phrases, not just words, and the commas separate them out. They also connect some of these ideas. I was feeling hungry, comma, so I made myself a sandwich. And also they introduce um, a phrase or a clause at the, at the, as, as the day came to an end, comma, the firefighter put out the last spark. So we can see the two different clauses, the two different phrases are separated by a comma. They are always before certain words like, yes, yes, I'll be there. Well, well, thanks for reminding me, comma, please, please, comma, open the window and a name, Jane, comma, stand up straight. So the commas always are there. And then they also separate different information. And we'll talk more about that when they use parenthetically football, which is a popular sport, is very good for your health. They separate out adjectives and they separate out quotes or speech and they help to show contrast, and they're used to stop confusion, and they also help to interrupt the flow, and to interrupt the flow of sentence. On the other hand, however, it's showing a contrast, and they separate dates and addresses, and the statement, like we talked about the tag question. So commas can be used for lists, for clauses and phrases, and for set phrases. Now, let's see if we can add some commas to these lists. I stuff my crumpled t-shirt, my socks, and my sandwiches in my rucksack. The house in the mess. The worktops are littered with dirty cups, saucers, plates, knives, forks, and spoons. Peter takes the bread for the bread pin, peanut butter from and a plate from the cupboard, and the butter from the fridge. My socks, shoes, trousers, and jumper are wet through. So can you use commas to separate some of these lists? Pause the webinar and see how you get on. Okay, I hope that you were able to add these commas to separate out the lists and to show the different parts of the sentence were separated. 
So here's a quick recap. Do we know three uses for a full stop? What is a run-on sentence? Three, two uses for a question mark. What are exclamation, what do exclamation marks show? And list five uses for a comma. So pause the webinar, so let's see if you can answer those questions. How closely have you been listening? How much do you understand about this end punctuation and commas? Okay, so three uses of full stops, declarative sentences, imperative sentences, and abbreviations. Run on sentences, they just go on. And sometimes you use a comma instead of a full stop or no punctuation whatsoever. So question marks are used for real questions, tag questions, rhetorical questions, statement questions. Exclamation marks show sudden commands, intensity of emotion, intensity of volume, and strong feelings. And commas are used to separate words in a list, to separate phrases and clauses, and introduce speech, and avoid confusion and all sorts. Let's now look at colons and semicolons. Now colons are the two dots. They make things more distinct. They separate ideas. So the three main uses of colons are to introduce a general idea and then you make it more specific. We have an enemy, time. There's only one leader, me. So three ways to use a colon and then we would set, so we've got the general idea and it goes to a specific idea. Also colons introduce lists. So we've, we've invited a small group of friends, Tony, Ria, Elliot, Charlotte, Greg, a small group of friends, ironic. So the colon introduced the list of friends. He wrote several books, The Mask, The Cross, The Rebel. So you're listing the different books and the colon introduces the list of books. And colons can, as well as commas, introduce speech or direct quotes. He said, talk to me about it another time. They shouted, look out. So they're introducing speech or quotations. What about semicolons then? Now they look different. They are the dot with the comma. They are used to connect ideas. So colons separate ideas and semicolons connect ideas. So they show that ideas are connected together. They can replace connectives, coordinating connective fanboys for and nor, but yet and so. However, to correctly use a semicolon, both parts before the semicolon and after the semicolon should make sense on their own without the semicolon. So, for example, it was cold, it was cold in the kitchen, so I danced to keep warm. It was cold in the kitchen, semicolon, I danced to keep warm. I danced to, to, to Bob Marley, whatever you like to listen to, to keep warm. You've got the semicolon there. They both make sense before and after the semicolon. It was raining and I was going to get drenched. It was raining, semicolon, I was going to get drenched. And I've used ellipsis at the end, just expecting the inevitable. I love salad, but they like pizza. I love salad, semicolon, they like pizza. So it's a connection between the two ideas, but actually it's a contrasting connection. Semicolons can also be used to make long lists very manageable. So you can use them for lists, but not like commas, they're much longer. So we travel to four cities, colon, to introduce the list of cities, Manchester in the north of England, semicolon, Edinburgh in Scotland, semicolon, Cardiff in Wales, and finally London, the capital of England. So you've got the different parts of the sentence that are separated by semicolons. The list is a bit longer. The dogfight was vicious colon so the list of what happened in the dogfight is introduced by a colon rover grabbed rex by the throat semicolon rex bit rover's ear semicolon both canines canines were left injured so it's a long list of different actions within this vicious dogfight and they're separated by semicolons not commas and this one is about um writing different companies. Only three people wrote back. Mr. Thomas from the American Publishing Company, semicolon. Mrs. Mariah from the independent UK company, semicolon. Ms. Eli from the online publishing firm. So again, you can see that these lists are much longer than the list that we use with commas, not colons, with commas. Okay, now we're talking about additional information in the middle of the sentence. 
also known as parenthesis. So it might be a phrase, a group of words without a verb, or it might be a clause, a group of words with a verb, and then you put it in the middle to add information. Now, in the middle of the sentence, you can add three different types of punctuation. So we've got a sentence like this, my next door neighbors are very loud, or, or, and they always party at the weekend. So you could say, my next door neighbors, who are very loud to use the dashes on either side, always party at the weekend. So you've added that extra information in the middle of the sentence, but you've used dashes on either side. My next door neighbors who are very loud, always party at the weekend. You've got use brackets on either side to add the, add the extra information in the middle. And you've got the dot, dot, dot at the end. My next, door neighbor, my next door neighbors who are very loud, always party at the weekend, exclamation mark to show a strong emotion. And you're using commas. So although it's the same information, parenthetical, dropped in in the middle, you can use dashes, you can use brackets, and you can use commas. But you need both of them. You need both of them to show both parts of the sentence. Now, what is the difference between a dash and a hyphen, because we talked about using dashes for these parenthetical dropped in the middle parts of the sentence. Well, a hyphen is really short and a dash is much longer. A hyphen, you just drop it in there to stick two letters together, sorry, two words together, but the dash helps us with the sentence. So you can see that these are all hyphenated. He was a strong-willed father. That was a red-headed, my red-headed cousin. The, the coast, coat was water resistant. My sister-in-law is wonderful and he was a well-built personal trainer. They're hyphenated, so it's short, sticking words together. Whereas dashes act like brackets. His muscles were big, the biggest I'd ever seen, and he gained many clients as a personal trainer. So you can see the dashes are not used just to stick words together, they're used to separate out different parts of a sentence, not just with words. However, a dash, a dash, the dash is dashing, it's very versatile. So you might have an oven glove or you might have washing up gloves. Sometimes you use both of them and sometimes you use one. This is like a dash, sometimes you only use one, dash but sometimes you use them both so for example to expand a sentence you would have both of them you are a friend my best friend and I'd like you to be my maid of honor just then Tom my second cousin got home from work my results will depend as my gran used to say on how much effort you put in so extending the sentence you need two but you can use one dash as a semicolon to add a little bit of extra information I booked the holiday he has all the fun. So it's showing the contrast like a semicolon. The new car's just arrived and she decided she no longer wanted it like a semicolon. Mrs. Brown demands one thing from her pupils, attention, like a, com a colon. The dash is versatile. You can use it like a bracket. You can use it like a semicolon. You can use it like a colon, but you can also use it in dialogue to show hesitation or interruption. Mum, can I have some chocolate? No, you'll ruin your dinner, Mum replied. Can you see the dash there is used to show interruption? I, I, I can't, I, it, it can't be a, a dragon, she screamed. That shows hesitation, it shows that sense of terror. So you can use a dash to extend, to develop, to add information, to, for interruption, for hesitation. It's a fantastically dashing, diverse and versatile piece of punctuation. So quick recap. Brackets for extra information in the middle of the sentence. Dashes can be used as brackets. Dashes can act like semicolons and they can also be used for interruption or hesitation. I've, 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 I've lost my bus, bus bar, she muttered to herself, searching a her handbag. You can use that in dialogue. For the last part of the webinar, I want us to talk about punctuation speech. So dialogue is wonderful for your nonfiction writing. And also if you're using quotations, in, sorry, in fiction writing dialogue, and also if you're using quotations in, in, in nonfiction writing, you can punctuate speech. Now, what are the rules? We can see that I've tried to color code them here for you. The opening speech marks and the end speech marks completely cover the words that are being spoken. Brilliant, isn't he? All of those words that are being spoken are being surrounded by the opening and the closed speech marks. Beginning after the opening speech marks, we need a capital letter. Brilliant, isn't he? Isn't it, um, he? Tell him I said that. We need the capital letter. 
And then the other punctuation, the question mark, an exclamation mark, a full stop is tucked in, tucked in like your school shirt, tucked in nice and neat. And so the end punctuation goes after the question mark, after the full stop. Commas sometimes interrupt speech. So I call it interrupted speech. Let's go now, Jess side, because we can't be late. So Jess side is in the middle. It's kind of been interrupted. And then you've got the other side. So let's go now, comma, Jess side, comma, because we can't be late. But the interrupted speech, because we can't be late, doesn't need a capital letter for the second part. OK, so you've got those five rules for punctuation. Opening and closing speech marks goes completely around. You need a capital letter before, you need to tuck the punctuation in before the closed speech marks. If the speech is interrupted, like she sighed, he shouted, you need commas, and the second part of the speech doesn't need the capital. Okay, I hope that has helped. Have a go at these recap questions, just so that you've still got it fresh in your brain. Three uses for a colon, do you remember why they're used? Which connectives do semicolons replace? When would you use semicolons in a list? What is the difference between a colon and a semicolon? What's the difference? What's the difference between a hyphen and a dash? And what are the five rules for punctuation speech, punctuating speech? Pause the webinar, have a go at these questions. Have you been able to do it? OK, so three uses for the colon. They introduce lists. They show a general idea going to something specific and they introduce dialogue. The connectives that replace semicolons are fanboys for and nor, but, or and yet. Semicolons are used in a list when the list is very long. Colons separate and semicolons connect. Dashes are for words and dash, sorry, hyphens are for words, sticking words together and dashes, dashes help in sentences in lots of different ways. And the five rules for punctuation, you need the end start and end speech marks right surrounding all the words, the capital letter, you need the punctuation tucked in before the end speech marks, you need commas if you're interrupting the speech, and the second half doesn't need a capital letter. I hope now that you feel that you are a punctuation expert. Thank you for joining me, Year 7, and see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>